Last time, we trained our neural network and it made suspiciously good predictions of your score on a test based on how many hours you slept and how many hours you studied the night before. Before we celebrate and begin changing our sleep and study habits, we need some way to ensure that our model reflects the real world. To do this, let's first spend some time thinking about data. Like a lot of data, our input and output values come from real-world observations. The assumption here is that there is some underlying process, and our observations give us insight into that process. But our observations are not the same thing as the process. They are just a sample. Our observation says that when we sleep for three hours and study for five, the grade we earned was a 75. But does this mean that every time you sleep for three hours and study for five, you will earn a 75? Of course not, because there are many other variables that matter here, such as the difficulty of the test, or whether you've been paying attention in lectures. We could quantify these variables to build a better model, but even if we did, there would still be an element of uncertainty that we could never explicitly model. For example, maybe the test was multiple choice and you guessed on a few problems. One way to think about this is that observations are composed of signal and noise. Nate Silver, the guy who correctly predicted the U.S. election results for 50 out of 50 U.S. states in 2012, wrote a great book on exactly this. The idea is that we're interested in an underlying process, the signal, but in real data our signal will always be obscured by some level of noise. An interesting example of this shows up when comparing the SAT scores of students who take the SAT both junior and senior year. Right on the College Board's website it says, the higher a student scores as a junior, the more likely that student's subsequent scores will drop. Why would this be? It seems like students who did well junior year would also do well senior year. We can make sense of this by considering that SAT scores are composed of a signal and a noise component. The signal being the underlying aptitude of a student, and the noise being other factors that affect test scores. Basically, if the student had a good day or not. Of the students who did well the first time, we expect a disproportionate number to have had a good day. And since having a good day is random, when this subset of students have a regular or bad test day on their next test, their scores, on average, will go down. So if we can convince our model to fit the signal and not the noise, we should be able to avoid overfitting. First we'll work on diagnosing overfitting, and then we'll work on fixing it. Last time we showed our model predictions across the input space for various combinations of hours sleeping and hours studying. We'll change our data a bit to make overfitting more obvious and retrain our model on the new data set. If we re-examine our predictions across our sample space, we see some strange behavior. Neural networks are really powerful models, and we see here that all that power has been used to fit our data really closely, which creates a problem. Our model no longer is reflective of the real world. According to our model, in some cases, studying more will actually push your score down, which seems unlikely. Hopefully, studying more will not decrease your score. So it appears our model is overfitting, but how do we know for sure? A widely accepted method is to split our data into two portions, training and testing. We won't touch our testing data while training the model and only use it to see how we're doing. Our testing data is a simulation of the real world. We can plot the error on our training and testing sets as we train our model and identify the exact point at which overfitting begins. We can also plot testing and training error as a function of model complexity and see similar behavior. So now we know overfitting is a problem, but how do we fix it? One way is to throw more data at the problem. A simple rule of thumb as presented by Yasser Abu Mostaf in his excellent machine learning course available from Caltech is that you should have at least 10 times as many examples as the degrees of freedom in your model. For us, since we have nine weights that can change, we would need 90 observations, which we certainly don't have. Another popular and effective way to mitigate overfitting is to use a technique called regularization. One way to implement regularization is to add a term to our cost function that penalizes overly complex models. A simple but effective way to do this is to add together the square of the weights to our cost function. This way, models with larger magnitudes of weights cost more. We'll need to normalize the other part of our cost function to ensure that our ratio of the two error terms does not change with respect to the number of examples. We'll introduce a regularization hyperparameter, lambda, that allows us to tune the relative cost. 
higher values of lambda will impose bigger penalties for high model complexity. If we train our model now, we see the fit is still good, but our model is no longer interested in exactly fitting our data. Further, our training and testing errors are much closer, and we've successfully reduced overfitting on this dataset. To further reduce overfitting, we could increase lambda. And that's it. We've trained and evaluated an artificial neural network to predict your score on a test based on how many hours you slept and studied the night before. I've really enjoyed making these videos, and I wanted to say a big thank you to everyone who's watched and commented. I want to point out that supporting IPython notebooks are linked below and available at welchlabs.com forward slash blog. To be kept up to date on future videos, you can subscribe below and follow me on Twitter. Thanks.